And it doesn't matter how bad it is in the world, if there's war or recession or, well, lockdowns, bodybuilding is the cure for all that nonsense. Vigorous Steve here. Let's continue with budget bodybuilding, which you can follow during a recession, so you can save some money and put some money aside for when the day comes that your favorite stocks or cryptocurrencies are on a huge discount. They're already on a discount, but I think you can get them even cheaper than what they are now, because as the recession continues, the stock market and the cryptocurrency market is going to slump downwards. So your dollar cost average on the way down, because you never know the exact bottom that the cryptocurrency or the stock that you want to buy is going to reach. Do yourself a favor, keep 25% of your cash on standby in case there's a liquidation week on the way downwards that is far below the 200 week moving average. But for that, you need to be very, very patient. It might take days or weeks or even months for this liquidation week to occur, and it might not happen at all. But if your order gets filled and most of the liquidation week gets filled right back up to the 200 week moving average, then you're no longer on a budget. And if the liquidation week doesn't happen, you keep your 25% cash on standby in case the downward trend is broken. All right, we already covered the cycle design, how to take anabolic energetic steroids and perhaps other performance enhancing drugs as cheaply as possible to at least sustain your mass and strength and overall muscularity during this recession period. We covered that in the previous video. It was already close to 20 minutes, so I had to cut it short. In this video, we're going to discuss the training, the supplementation, and the nutrition, and how to do that as cheaply as possible. So all of you natties out there, rejoice. We're going to go right into it. But before we do, please like the video, leave a comment for the algorithm, and consider subscribing if you haven't already. Hit the notification bell button while you're at it so you can get notified. That's right, whenever a new video drops. Let's start with training. Now, I'm sure we're all familiar with how to train as cheaply as possible because for the last two years, we didn't really have a choice due to the lockdowns. Thank you very much for all of you guys that ended up training at home during the lockdown in the garage, in the basement, in the shed, in the attic, in your backyard using logs. For all of you guys that trained at home for a year or two or however long the lockdown was at your area, I'm sure you guys are pretty sick of it. So you're going to have to make a choice. Do you want to continue to train at home with the limited equipment that you have? Or are you going to liquidate and sell all of your home gym equipment so you can spend that money on a membership or again, buy some stocks or cryptocurrencies which are going to appreciate after the recession is over and done for? That's entirely up to you. If you decide to train at home, basically all you need is a squat rack, a barbell, an easy bar, an adjustable bench, maybe some resistance bands, and enough weight to keep you going. Now, if you're strong in the big three, you're a heavy squatter, heavy deadlifter, heavy bencher, then of course you're going to need to buy more weight. So let's say you put five plates on your deadlift, then you need 10 plates in total, 10 45 pound plates or 10 20 kilo plates. And besides that, you can buy two 10 kilo plates or 25 pound plates and maybe two or five kilo plates, 10 pound plates, and maybe a couple micro plates for progressive overload purposes. So the stronger you are, the more you're going to need to invest into your home gym. Now, personally, I bought a squat rack, a barbell, an easy bar and an adjustable bench and some resistance bands. But what I did is I mostly bought 10 kilo plates, 25 pound plates, because I like to stiff like deadlift all the way to the floor and get as much range of motion as I can. So instead of buying six 20 kilo plates for a 140 kilo stiff like a deadlift, I bought 12 10 kilo plates so I could put six plates per side, still get 140 kilos on my stiff like a deadlift, but get this much more range of motion. For squat, it doesn't matter which plates you use. For bench press, it doesn't matter. For barbell curls, overhead presses, right? Jefferson squats, it doesn't really matter how big the plates are unless it's for the actual deadlift from the floor. Now, since I don't really deadlift anymore because my back is already sufficiently developed and I prefer my stiff-legged deadlifts or Romanian deadlifts, however you want to call them, I like the range of motion there. So I decided to invest into 12 10 kilo plates so I can put six per side. That gets the job done more than enough. It should be enough to bridge this period while we're in a recession. This allows you to save 
on a gym membership. But then again, many of us spend months at home during these lockdowns. And honestly, I'm getting kind of sick of it to train at home by myself without any kind of gym atmosphere around me. So if you didn't invest into a home gym yet, or you do have a home gym, calculate what the costs are going to be to invest into a very basic home gym to bridge the period during the recession, or calculate how much your home gym is worth if you want to sell that to somebody who would prefer to train at home during a recession while you prefer to train in a real gym. Calculate how much the total is and then see how many year memberships you get out of that at a decently equipped gym close by. Again, you have to factor in the travel time because traveling costs money also. You can't really work while you're traveling. You have to spend money on gas or on public transportation. The further the gym is away, the more you're going to spend and the more time you're going to lose. So find a gym that's close by, decently equipped for you to train there while keeping all of your muscle mass. And if you're doing that budget cycle that we discussed in a previous video, that shouldn't be an issue at all. Find a gym close by, see how many year memberships you can get there for the same cost as you would have to invest into your home gym or the amount of money you would get by selling your gym equipment. This is probably the cheapest option you can go with. Now, hopefully this gym is decently equipped, has a decent atmosphere. Again, a budget gym, a real budget gym with minimal equipment that usually has budget people too. Um, yeah, so keep that in mind. It might not be very enjoyable to train in a gym that's poorly equipped and a $5 or $10 for a monthly membership. So keep that in mind, do some research and then decide which direction you wanna to go to save as much money as possible. Regarding the supplementation, you can bring it down to zero if you want to, because the supplements, as the name implies, they are supplements on top of your nutrition. So if you want to go super cheap, you can just focus on the nutrition and not take any supplements. So that means no multivitamin, no berberine, no fish oil, no magnesium, no zinc, no ashwagandha root extract, no melatonin, no pre-workouts, no intra-workouts, no post-workouts, <laughs> no whey protein. All of those supplements, they're luxury, but I do believe that it's worth spending the money on a solid multivitamin, preferably a two per day or three per day multivitamin formula. So you cover all of the bases and get all of the minerals and vitamins and some other micronutrients in with two or three capsules or tablets per day. And it's probably cheaper to go with a multivitamin and you're focusing on your nutrition purely on caloric intake. Maybe go with foods that are reasonably cheap, but not so micronutrient dense. Talking about chicken, broccoli, rice, oatmeal, I will cover all of that a little bit later. So if you go with cheap foods, maybe a multivitamin that's solid on top is actually cheaper compared to solely focusing on micronutrient dense foods, right? So you have to balance it out to each other. Now, I would prefer to add fish oil on top of that. There's so much scientific li literature that fish oil is highly beneficial in a multitude of different scenarios and for a multitude of different reasons. So I'm not going to bore you with that. A little bit of fish oil with each meal, 500 milligrams to 800 milligrams EPA and DHA omega-3s combined. I feel that it's always worth spending the money on a high quality fish oil because there's so many benefits of fish oil supplementation. Plus, now you don't need to spend the extra money on overly expensive salmon or sardines or chia seeds or walnuts or anything else that contains a decent amount of omega-3s. You can leave all of the omega-3 rich foods out, which are generally speaking way more expensive than chicken and ground beef, which also has a little bit of omega-3s, albeit not that much, if you go with fish oil supplementation. So a good multivitamin, a solid fish oil. I would add on top of that, since most of you are going to be on a budget cycle, 2000 milligrams N-acetylcysteine to increase glutathione content and increase your overall antioxidant status. Because again, taking steroids and training for hypertrophy, you create a lot of free radicals and you don't want all of this oxidative stress on your body. Now, it's a little bit of a toss up between astragalus root extract and tutka. Do you want to keep your liver as healthy as possible, improve detoxification and improve your overall lipid parameters, keep your total cholesterol nice and range, HDL somewhat high, LDL as close to 100 milligrams per deciliter 
as possible. Again, if you're using steroids, don't expect the world. Or do you want to keep your kidneys as healthy as possible? Because, well, if you're going on a budget cycle consisting of boldenone, knowing that there's some scientific evidence that boldenone is kidney toxic, maybe you'd want something in place to protect your kidneys more. Again, we're on a budget, so we're going to have to choose. If you're not on that much of a budget, please take both. 4,000 milligrams astragalus root extract and maybe 500 to 1,000 milligrams tutka. Again, if you're taking the anadrol once or twice per week, I think that 1,000 milligrams of tutka is going to be beneficial, which will improve your blood work parameters if you have the money to spend on blood work during this recession. But ideally, if you have to choose between kidney health and liver health, knowing that the liver ultimately will regenerate itself and heal itself over time, and you can improve your liver function with dietary choices, more on that later, I would go with 4,000 milligrams astragalus root extract to lower inflammation around the kidneys. Again, if you're taking testosterone and boldenone, your blood pressure might be slightly increased. And even though you're mitigating some of that with proper electrolyte intake and a bivalol, I would always choose for kidney protection because the kidneys won't really regenerate. And if they do heal themselves, that's a trajectory of years. You don't see your glomerular filtration rate magically increase by adding the astragalus root extract in. It's there as a preventative measure. And if you're trying to save money on Primo and you're going with boldenone on top of your testosterone, you better have some kidney protection in place because, again, the scientific evidence is there for kidney toxicity. And if you don't want to spend money on astragalus root or Tutka, then you're going to have to go with testosterone only and an aromatized inhibitor, right? Play it safe, even though, well, aromatized inhibitors have maybe some issues of themselves. There's no free rides. You're always going to have to sacrifice something if you want to keep gains or improve upon them. Unfortunately, that's the nature of the beast. The last supplement you can look into, probably vitamin D3. I mean, it's such a freebie. Of course, if you have the extra time, Full body sun exposure for 20 minutes per day will give you sufficient levels of vitamin D3. So if you're working outside or you're in a hotter climate where you can just suntan and sunbathe all day, you're living on the beach, um, you're probably not on a budget by then. But well, there are people out there who can get full body sun exposure 20 minutes, 30 minutes per day. So they don't need vitamin D3 supplementation. If you can't get that 5,000 IUs of vitamin D3, it's worth it. So many benefits associated with vitamin D3. And if that's not required, maybe 25 to 50 milligrams zinc picolinate for androgen-mediated gene transcription for your immune system to prevent acne, to act as a minor aromatized inhibitor. There's a lot of benefits of supplementing with zinc picolinate, 25 to 50 milligrams per day, depending on how much zinc you're getting from your general multivitamin and how much zinc you're getting from your diet. So if you're eating a lot of beef or beef liver or other zinc-rich foods, then of course you don't need to supplement with 50 milligrams zinc. 25 milligrams should be sufficient. Now you're slashing the costs in half. And if your over-the-counter supplement multivitamin contains a lot of zinc, then maybe you don't need zinc supplementation at all. So again, see what you get from your multivitamin and your nutritional intake and then supplement accordingly as the name implies. And everything else is a luxury that you can save money on. And let's move over to the nutrition. We have two restrictions here. One being that you can only eat foods that your body agrees with, that you can digest by yourself. You don't get acid reflux. You don't get intestinal upsets, bloating, gas, farting, etc., etc., etc. Because all of those issues you need to mitigate with supplementation, betaine hydrochloride, apple cider vinegar, Tums, baking soda, Man, a proton pump inhibitor, et cetera, et cetera. You don't want to take any of those because that adds further expenses to your bodybuilding bill. And if you only focus on the food that your body agrees with, you can digest them by yourself just fine. But that might mean that the budget and affordable food options that you have might not digest well for you. So maybe you can't digest chicken or rice or oatmeal or whatever else that's reasonably cheap. Then you'd have to go with the second best cheapest option, which should digest better. And again, so you don't have to resort to all kinds of supplementation to get your digestion optimized. The second option here, well, better go with the thumb. The second option here is that you buy all of your foods 
in bulk. Now, I already discussed it in a previous video, how to do bodybuilding as cheaply as possible. I'll link it at the end of this one. Quick reminder, find a supplier, a wholesale supplier that delivers to your house. Buy a chest freezer, maybe 100 liters, so you can freeze all of the food that you just ordered. And then order all the food wholesale. We're talking about 20 kilos of chicken, 20 kilos of beef, 20 kilos of a white fish that's cheap maybe 20 kilos of rice, 20 kilos of oatmeal, have it all delivered. Don't spend the money or the time to source that on a discount at the grocery store because whatever you get from the wholesale distributor is going to be infinitely cheaper than getting it from the grocery store, even if it's on a discount. And usually when it's on a discount at the grocery store, it's close to the expiration date, which well might ruin your digestion also. So stay clear of the discounts, especially for meats. If chicken is on a discount, just avoid it. It's close to the expiration date. When you open the packet, it's going to smell horribly. Same for ground beef, same for most of the fishes. You're better off buying everything wholesale, freezing it, storing it for later. And even though the initial investment on a chest freezer is going to be more substantial, you're probably not spending that on a home gym or you're selling your home gym equipment, which should give you more than enough money to buy a chest freezer. Whatever foods that is cheap and that you can digest well, just buy as much as you can, ask for a discount, have it delivered to your house so you don't have to spend the money on gas to haul it yourself. This is the absolute cheapest way to eat. You can get a million and one cups of rice from a 20 kilo bag of rice, basmati rice, jasmine rice, whatever rice you prefer that's affordable and easy to digest. And make sure you go with steel cut oatmeal or rolled oats not the oatmeal that is full with processed garbage or full with gluten, forcing you to result into supplementation to keep your digestion going. What you can do is mix basmati or jasmine rice with oatmeal in a three to one ratio or two to one ratio or one to one ratio up to your preference. This way you allow the oatmeal to lower the glycemic index of the rice. This also gives you a bit of a funky texture, but of course, since oatmeal has a decent amount of protein and a decent amount of fiber contained within, and also a little bit of fat, you combine both carbohydrate sources to get a little bit broader spectrum of nutrition with each meal. Ideally, preferably, what I used to do is mix rice with quinoa, but quinoa is mad expensive. So during a recession, when you're on a budget, quinoa is out. Maybe you save that for a cheat meal when you go for your fancy quinoa salad at the local restaurant. But if you're eating at home, rice and oatmeal, even though the texture is a little bit funky, something to get used to, and a little bit gooey and a little bit sticky, once you're used to it, it's actually a very nice combination. You can eat a lot of rice, you can eat a lot of oatmeal, then you supplement, yes, supplement your protein sources on top. When you're eating a ton of carbs, you're in a caloric surplus. Chronically, all of these carbohydrates act protein sparing. So when you eat 500, 600, 800, 1000 grams of carbs every day with maybe a decent amount of fat, just enough fat to keep your biological functions going, but not too much fat that you're gaining body fat. In the scenario where you're eating a ton of carbohydrates and perhaps using a long acting insulin on top for optimal nutrient partitioning and absorption, your protein requirement is pretty low. 150 grams of protein, 200, 225 grams of protein at maximum, besides your 1,000 grams of carbs, more than enough. More than enough, guys. So you're really, really cheap this way. You get all of your food delivered. You don't need to eat so much protein, which is, generally speaking, more expensive. You're getting a decent amount of fat and healthy fats from the protein sources that you're eating, as well as the oatmeal that you're eating. So you probably don't even need to supplement additional fat on top. Again, because you're relying on the carbohydrates for all of your energy fulfillment. And if you do need a little bit of fat, besides the fish oil that you're having with each meal, maybe add some nuts and seeds here and there, which you can also buy wholesale, reasonably cheap. You get them unroasted. You can always roast them yourself. I believe that the electricity bill that is going to go up is going to be less for the unit price that you would spend extra comparing roasted almonds to raw almonds. And you probably only need to add about 50 grams of nuts and seeds on top of your nutrition to get adequate amounts of healthy fats in 
on a daily basis. You get a decent amount of fats from your protein, a decent amount of fats from your oatmeal, nuts, and seeds, and your fish oil. That brings us to the vegetables. Of course, vegetables are going to be important, but vegetables are also expensive. For the amount of micronutrients that you get from your vegetables, probably a general multivitamin is going to be cheaper. But uniquely to vegetables, its fiber content is probably more beneficial for a gastrointestinal health compared to oatmeal. So you might be able to get away by buying vegetables on a discount whenever you do go to the grocery store because, well, everything else is getting delivered, which is very, very convenient. So maybe when you go to the gym, if you decide to go to the gym during the recession, after which you go to the grocery store maybe an hour before closing time, at which point some vegetables are going to be on a discount. You just buy the vegetables that are cheap, that are affordable to you, in my opinion, it doesn't really matter which vegetables you get as long as you eat. Some green leafy vegetables, and whether that's kale or salad or broccoli or spinach or bok choy, whatever's on discount, just get it for cheap. 100 grams, 200 grams of vegetables at the end of the day, in my opinion, should be sufficient for gastrointestinal health because this unique fiber, two vegetables, will help you to clear your intestinal tract at the end of the day. When you're done eating all of your carbohydrates with a little bit of protein on top, this is probably the cheapest way you can diet during a recession and keep some money aside to buy some stocks or cryptocurrency. And if you want, you can always go with canned tuna a couple times per week. Just don't have it every day because you're running the risk of building up mercury and lead or other heavy metals, which again can be found in some kinds of tunas. So keep that in mind. A couple times per week should be okay. Just don't replace all of your meals with canned tuna and do yourself a favor if you're using performance enhancing drugs, go with the canned tuna in spring water. Definitely not the canned tuna in brine because those, like none other, give you a terrible moon face. Bananas are pretty cheap, especially on a discount. Again, if you go to the grocery store a little, little bit later in the day, bananas or other fruits might be on a discount as well. But uniquely to bananas, it seems that they get better as they ripen more. You might have to cut off a couple of the black spots, but if they're reasonably brown or a little bit mushy, actually they digest way better and taste a lot better too. So whatever you can get on a discount at the end of the day at the grocery store, by all means, go for it. The rest, just have it delivered, buy it wholesale, get your discounts in that way. Ultimately, it's going to be a lot cheaper. I've been doing it for years. I save so much money and time just having this stuff delivered to my house from a wholesale supplier. I have multiple wholesale suppliers here in Bangkok that deliver food to our house, the highest freaking quality, but even cheaper than whatever average quality you get at the grocery store. And I really hope this helps, guys. For all of you guys that are going to have to penny pinch the next couple of months or years, I wish you all good luck. I've been through it myself. It freaking sucks. I've had periods in my life where I had zero money to my name and had to borrow money off my parents just to survive because there was no employment opportunities after the economic crisis of 2010. So I know what you're going through. Personally, I always found a way to bodybuild, do it as cheaply as possible by focusing on super cheap nutrition and a cheap gym membership. But no matter how bad it got, I always found a way to bodybuild because that's my time one hour, one and a half hour, maybe two hours of bodybuilding. That's all me. And it doesn't matter how bad it is in the world. If there's war or recession or, well, lockdowns, bodybuilding is the cure for all that nonsense. And thank you guys so much for watching. You can find everything that I'm associated with down below in the description section. Follow me on Instagram and TikTok at Vigor Steve. Vigor's crew, you guys know what to do. A front double bicep for you guys. Hopefully, everybody can build their cannons a little bit more during this upcoming recession. Don't be discouraged. Keep going. Personality and character is built when life is tough. And when life ultimately does get better, you will have one hell of a survival story. I'll leave it there. Thank you guys so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.